a pleasure to have you. My pleasure. Um, we were just discussing, and you said that you focus healthcare, and healthcare and health tech is the new buzzword uh, right from here all the way to Detroit and to India and other places around the world. Um, the question, uh, the big question that I have to ask you off the bat is, uh, there are not many opportunities for healthcare because A, it's not easy for entrepreneurs to get the right funding, it takes a longer term for the product to evolve and come to market. So there are a lot of other challenges. There are very few entrepreneurs who are really successful. Uh, what is your take on this? Good question. So all the observations are correct. Healthcare companies take very long time to build. Healthcare is complex. Uh, funding is less compared to some of the other momentum investment areas like social media. But those are all realities, right? Those are, it's like saying, well, at 7 a.m. I want to go from Palo Alto to San Francisco, but I would not like traffic. Well, too bad, there is gonna be traffic. So either you go, go at a different time or you cope with traffic. Right. Going into healthcare is no different. So there are some realities. Number one, it is complex. Human body is complex. Human life is complex. Diseases are more complex. And as the demographic uh, shift is taking place, we're living longer. We are discovering new kinds of illnesses, new aspects of illnesses. All of that adds complexity. Uh, then, by virtue of the fact that it's a very highly regulated industry, it's going to take longer. So you have to prove the science. That itself takes long. And then you have to get the regulatory pathway gone through. That takes time. Uh, it's going to take time. And by definition, it's going to take money. By, by, as a corollary, it's going to take money. So it requires a lot of perseverance. You have to have a lot of staying power. So in healthcare, I often say, look, it's really not a sprint, as it would be, say, in social media. It's a marathon. Uh, it may be an Ironman. So you just have to, to have that attitude going in. It's going to take a while, but then the fulfillment is tremendous. You are solving something of very strong social need and, and, and impact. I take two different geographies. One is the U.S. and I see the emerging market, so I see uh, India. So countries like India give you huge scale. Uh, country like you is the perception and to a large extent reality is there's a lot of great innovation here. But I'm flipping that because I heard uh, from someone that uh, the cost of innovation and great innovation is one hundredth in countries like India. Somebody came out with a small device that can do 30 different tests with a drop of a blood and at one hundredth of a cost and that may not happen in this country. Yeah. So when you are scouting for good resources and real good innovation. Uh, how do you balance this out? Again, phenomenal question. I'll come at it in a couple of different ways. Uh, when I began in healthcare in the mid 90s, you could take any healthcare related number in the US and multiply that by two, and you'll get the global number. So, number of MRIs sold times two global. Number of physicians uh, active in, say, cancer times two, you get the global number. That number is no longer two. That multiple is now between five and seven, depending on where you go. And it's not because America has reduced in size, it's because the rest of the world has increased in size. So as a, as a demand category, healthcare is global, and it's growing elsewhere faster than it's going in this country. Now park that thought away. Uh, the second thought is on the supply side. Where is innovation? So I'll give you an example. One of our companies, OncoStem, has developed a test that predicts the relapse of cancer. And this was done with seven scientists in Bangalore. And it has a test that has ultimate disruption power of changing the way we diagnose cancer and we decide which drug to use. Uh, obviously, the markets are global. And in India, we can only start, but eventually we have to take it global to have the real impact. But we are seeing it more and more of sort of the reverse innovation, if, if you want to use that term, where a good idea is developed say in India or China or, or Brazil, and uh, US becomes the second market, not the first market. That trend is increasing. Okay. Uh, my last question is on IP protection. Um, I had uh, many opportunities to speak to discoverers of you know, um, drugs here, and they say they invest anywhere from 500 million to about a mil billion and a half to come up with a very good you know, uh, drug which is very successful in the market. Um, after 10 years or 8 years, uh, others in emerging economies will take that and run with it. And uh, they don't have that kind of a return. So when you are investing with entrepreneurs here in health tech, uh, how much of you know, that load is on you 
to look you know, far ahead in terms of eight years or ten years and, and to get the investment back? Wow, what a multidimensional question. So many aspects of it. Number one, when it comes to pharma innovation, US and Europe still remain the, the, the epicenter, if you will. It'll be a long while before India catches on to that. So we should not, I mean, I'd love to connect with India because I'm from there and I have part of my, my loyalty there, but we should call a spade a spade. That kind of innovation, India is not ready for yet. It'll be a long while. So which means we have to rely upon the US and Switzerland and so on for that, number one. Number two, it's not that a, that a successful drug takes a billion dollars to di discover. It's that in discovering that one drug, 100 experiments fail, and you have to take the cost of those into account. Right. The actual R&D on a drug might be 50, 60, 100 million. So then the onus becomes how do you increase the hit rate? Now historically that task has been very trial and error. I think that's where use of tech, use of software, use of AI can, can make a big difference. So we have a company in our portfolio called Cellworks. It's actually founded by people who came from the chip design industry. So they were working on networks in chip design, which are very complex networks, the high dependencies. And the epiphany was, well, in discovering a drug, you have to take into account some thousand pathways for that disease uh, in, in your body. And can you model that in a network and try all of the impact of a drug virtually first before you go do an experiment? And that tax away, takes away a lot of the cost uh, out of the system because the, the discovery phase, it becomes far more streamlined and much less prone to error. All right. It's a pleasure, always. Thank you, sir. My pleasure.